Hey, Rendo Steve here. Still no Larson. Still Larson is not watching Impact Wrestling. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Global Force Wrestling Impact. That's not a mouthful. Yeah, huge news in the world of Impact Wrestling. I might as well address that before this review of the latest episode of Impact Wrestling. Big news. We covered this on, I think we covered it actually on non-news, uh, the Patreon exclusive uh, uh, show that we run over on Going In Raw. At TNA, now officially Impact Wrestling rebranded as GFW Global Force Wrestling. The show will still be called Impact. The promotion's called GFW. I don't know what the deal with that is. Jeff Jarrett tried to explain it. Didn't do a very good job. He's on camera these days. I totally called that as having uh, been a possible scenario for Impact. But you know what? I'm going to get right into the review of Impact Wrestling for 7, uh, uh, July 6, 2017. First episode, post anniversary. All the titles from Global Force and Impact have been unified uh, and is pretty much a clean sweep, I think, for Global Force, if I'm not mistaken. Although I think LAX had both the titles already. Anyways, um, so here's the deal. I watched I watched like the first half hour slam anniversary because of the G1 special in USA, the New Japan thing. Me and Larson both headed down to Long Beach for that. Of course, uh, night two was uh, Sunday, uh, which was the same day as slam anniversary, so I didn't get to catch it live. Uh, last night, uh, I bought it, uh, the replay off the Fight TV app, which is a great app, and uh, and, and I started watching it last night. Uh, I got through a couple matches. I got to D'Angelo Williams' amazing performance. Man, talk about a dude ready for prime time. Too bad he's headed back to the NFL. Um, so I haven't watched the whole thing. Let me know in the comments if you actually want me to review Slam Anniversary. It's going to be kind of late news. Like I, I might be able to do it, I don't know, like on Monday or something. Because um, I do plan on watching the rest of it later on today. Uh, let me know if you guys want to review. If, if you think, no, nah, it's too late. We don't really care. Then, uh, but you know, there's some apparently some pretty interesting things happened. The the Borash uh, Josh Matthews match, a lot of people are talking about it, saying it was kind of kooky, kind of crazy, kind of fun. Um, so I kind of want to check that out. Um, uh, so I'm definitely gonna watch Slammiversary. Let me know if you guys want me to post a video on it, just like this one. Real easy to do, but if uh, uh, the vast majority of you say, Steve, who cares? We don't care. Then pff, I'm not gonna do it. Anyways, um, let's. This episode kicked off with uh, a recap. No, actually, this episode kicked off with uh, one of those great LAX. They're that Latino gang, um, and I feel like they they, they did they did another one of their little segments. Little, they're hanging out in their little gang house or wherever they hang out, Conan's house, I guess, and they're talking about uh, all their you know their goings on. They they got plans to introduce a new member tonight of LAX. Um, you know, hey, I'll give this to Impact. They had a uh, they had Slammiversary on Sunday, and by Thursday they were able to get a new episode of TV up. Uh, that's something NXT can't do yet. They have their takeover on Saturdays, and then like the following episode is just pure recap and just pure like and stuff they filmed that takeover. So give it up to Impact for being able to get a quick turnaround on their TV tapings. That's a positive, I guess. Um, anyways, after the LAX thing, we had a Slammiversary recap. They they are all in. Anthem is all in on that uh, on that owl, aren't they? Or is it M or is it pop? I think Anthem does the owl, but then there's like owls and other places on their programming. I don't really know how it works. Is pop, is the owl pop or Anthem? I think it's Anthem. Anyways, they love the owl. Jeff Jarrett, like I said, he uh, he made an appearance at Slam Anniversary, thanking everybody. It's amazing. That's one thing that I've really taken away from this. The fact that they're they're hammering home the whole you know it's 15 years in the making it's amazing that TNA has been around that long that they never actually their ship never actually sank the number of times that company was on the precipice allegedly of going under and they're still around that's weird that's really weird anyways uh, to start off the show uh, after the slam anniversary recap Alberto Del Rio Alberto El Patron comes down. In tow, he's got Dos Caras, his dad, and uh, his uh, his brother, Hijo de Dos Caros, Caras, which means son of Dos Caras, um, who apparently uh, Del Rio said uh, that guy might be actually coming to Impact. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see here. I, my guess is this. My guess is that LAX, right? LAX said that they're, they're debuting a new member. 
I'm guessing uh, that uh, they're going to try to recruit Alberto Del Rio. He's going to say, no, you're loco. You're crazy. I'm not going to do that. But then his brother is going to join LAX, and that's going to be his first major feud. That's my guess. I actually read a spoiler about LAX saying that Alberto was our new member. So I already know when that happened. That happened at the end of this episode. But my guess is the next thing is going to be they're going to try to recruit his brother. Could be wrong about that, but I think that'd be a good story. Um, One thing I noticed, this crowd, sadly, not as hype as the India paid crowd. When you don't pay your crowd to be there, they're not going to be that hyped unless you put on a really, really, really stellar product. And Impact doesn't really do that. Uh, so anyways, uh, Alberto is in the ring celebrating, saying that he respects Booby Lashley, saying that Booby is the best, but that he was the better man and how he's the champion of everything. Lashley comes down, says, Alberto, you're an egomaniac. You're celebrating on a fluke win. I would never do that. I want my rematch. Alberto says, fine, you get your rematch tonight in the main event. All right, so then we cut to, uh, I guess this is Bruce Pritchard's office. I don't know, this is the conference room. And it's Bruce Pritchard, uh, who I guess like is the commissioner GM guy. I don't know. I mean, I know he's got a podcast. I know he's been in the business for a long time. I just don't know exactly what his title is in TNA. Uh, anyways, he's there with, uh, Josh Matthews, Jeremy Borash and, and Pope, or is it the Pope? It's Pope. I forget. Anyways, he's like saying, did you quash your beef at slam anniversary? Everybody says, yeah, pretty much. He says, okay. You get, and then he just leaves with Tyrus. So apparently the stipulation of Josh Matthews and Jeremy Borash, uh, one is not going to be there anymore. Uh, the, like the loser leaves town aspect of their match at Slam anniversary, it's just completely forgotten. I mean, I'm actually okay with that simply because um, I I kind of like them as a commentary team. I'm just you know, I'm just saying they're pretty good. They're, like they they do their little bickering thing, but it's not overwhelming. It's not just it's not overpowering. So I'm fine. I don't really care. I'm fine with it. Like I wasn't, I don't think anybody was emotionally invested in somebody leaving anyways. Maybe they were, I don't know. Anyways. Uh, oh, that out comes Caleb Conley to fight uh, Sanjay Dutt. Great fact about Caleb Conley is actually suicide. Why didn't they bring out suicide to fight Sanjay Dutt? I hope they get rid of suicide because it's just Caleb Conley in a mass and nobody cares about. And then they transition to somebody else. So yeah, just make, let's just keep it Caleb Conley. People can actually get invested in that guy because he has a face and a name and he's a person. Suicide is just a video game character. It's really weird. Anyways, uh, Sanjay Dutt went over um, in a decent X Division match. Uh, Trevor Lee attacked Sanjay Dutt and held that belt, held the X Division title. So it looks like we're going to have Sanjay Dutt, Trevor Lee uh, promo. I really like Trevor Lee. I think he's fantastic. Uh, next up, we had a promo uh, with the returning Grado, who's the chubby British guy, um, Eddie Edwards, and then... Two guys who are called the Veterans of War, who one of them is Jax Dane, although I think he goes by a different name. And I just know Jax Dane because he was like the NWA world champion for a while. And for a spell, I was Wikipediaing who the NWA champion was. And then the other guy is, I think his name is Crimson. At least that's what his name is on Wikipedia. I don't know if he goes by a different name there in Impact. Anyways, uh, they have uh, shirts that say American flag AF. And at one point, he was going to drop the F-bomb. He says, because we're American as... F-. And then Eddie Edwards said, hold on, this is impact. You can't say fuck. Um, so anyways, they were forming like a team uh, that were going to take on a different team in the next match. It was like an eight-man tag, but it was four on four. Uh, and, and then the camera panned over, and there was another fat guy. I didn't know who that guy was. So I don't know. Again, I'm learning. You know, a lot of people are giving me shit. In the comments last time saying, you, you do research, Steve. You just, Why am I going to do research? I don't care about this shit. I'm just reviewing it because I'm, I'm. this is how a normal wrestling fan would get into it. They would watch it and then figure out everything else later. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. Anyways, uh, after this match, so the, the, the guys that we all know, Grado, Eddie, and Veterans of War went over a group. I don't know. I should have looked up the results. I don't know who the fuck they were. It was a bunch of different guys. Um Joseph Parks came down, a.k.a. Abyss, but he was as a Joseph Parks character. Um, th- th- I don't know what happened. Like, he just came down, um, and then they went to commercial. They came back, and my- Matt Seidel was coming down. So maybe, I don't I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Did I miss something? I, maybe it had something to do. I thought I read somewhere online that they were going to write Grado's visa issues into the show. Maybe Joseph Parks had... His visa papers? I'm speculating. I have no idea. You guys let me know in the comments. He came, he was walking down, and then they just it, they went to commercial, and Matt Seidel was coming down. There was no resolution to that. Anyways, Matt Seidel came down, also known as Evan Bourne, 
Um, and then in New Japan, wasn't he named something else? I forget. Anyways. Oh, I'm going out of focus. There we are. Uh, and then, oh, he was set to take on Braxton Sutter. Uh, so they fought in what I think was kind of an X Division match. I think they're in the X Division. Um, anyways, uh, Braxton Sutter lost. I don't get the thing. Braxton Sutter looks like a million bucks. I think he's like a good looking dude and he's a decent wrestler. Um, uh, he seen, he feels like an NXT guy. Why don't he should go to NXT. Anyways, he lost. He got mad. And when his girl, uh, Allie, tried to comfort him, he like did this. So we're getting shades of a domestic abuse heel character here with Braxton Sutter. Very frustrated at his loss. Well, maybe you should practice more Braxton. Anyways, another LAX segment. They just sitting around talking about their plans, drinking some Bud Light. And there's some like, uh, it sounds like the, the backing track to 187, that great song that Snoop Dogg and Dre did back in the day. Was it 187? No, uh, under uh, Deep Cover. <laughs> it's called Deep Cover because it's 187 on the blah, blah, blah. Anyways, then they announced that the Super X Cup was going to happen. Um, and it, it was uh, with competitors uh, from Wrestle Circus, uh, AAA in Mexico, AAW out of Chicago, I believe, Pro Wrestling Noah, and of course, uh, a dude from Impact. Um, so they're all represented in the Super X Cup. And they introduced uh, the first round uh, matchups. Um, I, I I think I'd heard about Drago before. I think I'd heard about it before. I don't know if I've actually saw him. He's got that great tongue that like it was cool. Anyways, Drago looked really neat. Um, ACH, I totally heard about him. He's cool. Um, or I've seen a couple of his matches rather. Um, and then there's a dude named Idris Abraham. I'd never heard of him. Um, he looks very disgruntled. He's he's his head is nothing but hair. He's got like a massive head of hair and then a massive beard. So it just looks like a big, he looks like Sideshow Bob a little bit, um, but with a beard. He looks like, I, I relate him in WGPW, he looks like a Hannibal Hansen type guy. Um, he has a great look. I feel like when they cut, they, then they did like a little video package with him introducing him. And uh, he's a good looking dude. It makes me wonder if he, maybe if he got rid of all that hair on the top of his head, if A, he'd be more comfortable. And B, you know, you, you, people like a good face. People, that's all I'm saying. People like a good face. Um, anyways, he was set to take on uh, Desmond Xavier, who a lot of people, I guess, have said good things about in the X Division. Um, so they t- they fought each other for the first round of the Super X Cup. Uh, now, like when that happened then. Uh, Desmond Xavier, he's good. Like he's got some cool moves. I feel like the match is, is, is a bit slow. I mean, it's the X Division. I remember the X Division for being like crazy, like all you know, fun, lots of action and stuff. And it just it felt like a lower mid card WWE match on superstars, you know, or main event or whatever. I mean, it was good. This is what bugs me too. Desmond Xavier dropped an RKO on Idris Abraham. Looked great. Idris Abraham kind of sold it and then they just fought more. It's an RKO. It's supposed to be like one of the most devastating moves in the business. And it's just a regular move in this guy's arsenal. I don't like that. That's not good. I mean, I'm not saying you always have to, you know, I mean, some people have a swinging neck breaker as their finisher. I'm not saying that every swinging neck breaker, but when something is so well established as a, a major finish move in the industry, maybe it shouldn't just be part of your normal arsenal. Like maybe make it your finish, but put like a spin on it. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't like people just busting out RKOs. It's kind of like the stunner. I mean, it's the same kind of move, but when people just drop stunners on people and then it's just all good, I'm not into that. I don't like that. Uh, anyways, uh, Xavier Desmond Xavier went over with a spinning, like a crazy spinning senton type thing off the top turnbuckle. It was really cool. Uh, so he moves on in the Super Cup, Super X Cup. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Gail Kim, um, who is teasing a big announcement for next week. She's probably gonna retire. Uh, I love Gail Kim. It's kind of a bummer she didn't like stick around WWE. But uh, I kind of like that she spent, you know, most of her career in that one place in TNA. Good for her. Uh, next up, we had oh, we had Moose dropping a promo or doing an interview talking about how next week he's going to fight Marafuji. Um, Marafuji, I, I had to do some research on him, but man, that dude is is money. He's been in a lot of places, won a lot of championships over there in Japan, and uh, I'm looking forward to this Marafuji versus Moose. This is cool. But then EC3 interrupted the promo and said that Moose, I want your grand champion title. Moose to me is a, is a, is I, I like how he incorporates the title into his character. Like he seems, to, I think he's gonna have that title for a while until he starts challenging for the heavyweight title. 
Next up, we had Rebel versus Sienna. I think this is my first time seeing Rebel. Sienna, I've seen over the past couple of weeks. She's now the unified GFW slash Impact champion um, or women's champion, whatever, knockouts champion. Um, decent enough match. I feel like Sienna could probably hang in the WWE. I, she see, I looked her up. She's been around. She's been around a while. She's been doing a lot of things. I could totally see her uh, moving up to that next level, going to NXT and, and dominating there. Um, Rebel was decent. I mean, the match was what it was. It, was, it wasn't like fantastic, but it was better than like a you know Dana Brooke match. So that's saying something. Uh, Sienna went over. Uh, yeah, Sienna went over. Then uh, in our main event. Lashley versus Alberto Del Rio, um, normal match. I mean, I feel like I feel like I feel like if if GFW if Impact is going to go anywhere, they really. I mean, I, I get it, Alberto Del Rio. He's a name. He's a big name in the wrestling scene. Lashley is great. Um, it's going to take a lot of sort of. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with ways. If if a sudden, all, if suddenly all of a sudden Anthem said, "Hey, Steve and Larson, you you do what you want. Make us make us a viable thing." It has to start with the wrestling, because if every week if Impact was delivering at least one four star match, one four star match a week, people will start paying attention. The audience you want will start paying attention, and I feel like everybody on the roster is sort of giving us two and a half three star matches. And I know that's kind of a subjective thing, but you're going to turn heads if your wrestling is good. That's where you start. That's where you start building your base, not off of old WWE names. You got to do something a little bit different. I mean, you, they went completely left field with the Broken Hardys thing, and that was great. And they started, the ratings started to creep up. But this last week, apparently, the ratings went like it was on a good upward trajectory and then went down. Anyways, the match was what it was. I mean, ADR, Alberto Del Rio is really trying. Like, he's really giving a lot of passion to his promos. I feel like the promo that he gave at the beginning of the show was probably the best that he's capable of, and it was better than anything we saw in WWE. I think WWE probably never gave him the chance to deliver a promo like that. He's really trying to get the crowd into it, and that crowd at the Impact Zone is nothing to write home to mom about, dude. Uh, So anyways, um, Lashley was on the verge of winning, uh, and then LAX came in, and they attacked uh, Lashley, took him down, but uh, Alberto was still down. And they announced right then and there that Alberto was the latest member of LAX. Alberto was totally sleeping through the entire thing, though. They carry him off. He's going to wake up in the morning just covered in LAX tattoos. Like He's going to be one of them dudes with like tattoos on his face. And he's going to be like, what the hell's going on here? Ay, que lastima. That's what he's going to say. Anyways, that's Impact. Some intrigue. We'll see what happens next week. I'm sure there are spoilers online because they tape all these in like a couple of different days. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you guys want a Slammiversary review. I'll review it. I got I got it. I bought it. I'm contributing to Impact. <laughs> Anyways, till next time, we'll talk to you guys later.